Um, welcome back to everybody who's been on the line um, to previous sessions so far, and welcome also to those who are joining us for the first time today. Uh, as I said, my name is Dorothea, I'm with the SDSN Secretariat, and we at this stage in our 24-hour webinar, we already heard from five of our national and regional networks on a great variety of topics all related to sustainable development and well-being. So for those of you who maybe don't know, uh, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network um, is a global network of academic and knowledge producing institutions with currently more than 30 national and regional networks from all around the world. All of these networks are charged to help progress on the sustainable development goals in an effort to create a more sustainable and ultimately more happy world for us all by 2030. In these, of course, admittedly very challenging times, uh, we appreciate their efforts in bringing the global community together um, and a bit closer together, actually, and all by in the digital space just as today. And we hope that uh, you will enjoy their input uh, just as much, much as we do. So uh, let me start with several housekeeping items for a go-to webinar today. Uh, to increase the sound quality, our attendees will be able to unmute their microphones today. So, however, we encourage everybody to actively participate in the session and uh, ask questions in the chat box that you see to the right of your go-to webinar control panel. Um, my colleague Jorge Tama and I, we remain available throughout the entirety of the session to answer any and all questions that you may have regarding the functionality. So please feel free to drop us a line in the chat box anytime. So at this stage, we have a little bit less than uh, 18 hours of programming uh, ahead in this 24-hour webinar, um, which you will find all the details at the link included in your welcome message. As we are moving west uh, around the globe, I am now extremely pleased to welcome you all to this next session, uh, which is a discussion on peace and the peace process in Afghanistan and the role of women therein. In fact, uh, the SDS in Afghanistan is the latest addition to our global network, and we are thrilled to have them participate in this global webinar today. I am now trying to hand it over to Mr. Ali Juma Takawi, uh, analyst at the SDS in Afghanistan Secretariat, uh, who will be our moderator for the session. Ali, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dorothea. Uh, hello, everyone. I uh, hope you are having a quality time with your families and uh, making the best out of the lockdown. Um, I am Ali Juma Takavi. I'll be moderating today's panel discussion hosted by SDS in Afghanistan. Uh, the topic for the discussion is Afghanistan's peace process, role of women, opportunities and challenges. Uh, first of all, I'll be talking about the layout of the webinar. So the whole webinar today will be uh, consisting of four speakers. The speakers will speak um, for 10 minutes each, and then uh, we will have a final question and answer session. Uh, so just to... Uh, go ahead and uh, talk about the speakers. So uh, our first speaker is Ms. Jamila Afghani. Uh, our second speaker is Ms. Zarqa Yaftali. Uh, our third speaker is Ms. Fiona Gall. And lastly, Dr. Musa Jafari will be speaking. I'll share some background information about each speaker before their presentation starts. Uh, so before we move ahead, I, I, I'd like to give you a little bit of context around the topic that we have for the panel discussion today. So uh, uh, the fall of the Soviet Union in late 1980s left a vacuum of power in Afghanistan. This led to the civil war in the country with the Mujahideen with the most dominant power. Uh, in 1996, the Taliban took, uh, uh, took over Kabul and announced the rule of an Islamic state. The incident of 9-11 and Taliban harboring Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan directed US invasion in 2001. So since then, uh, the war between the democratic Afghan government, the U.S., and its allies in the Talib uh, and the Taliban is going on. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost uh, in, in the past two decades. Uh, one of the major concerns during the Taliban era was human rights violations, and especially women's rights violations caused by the regime on a daily basis. Uh, banned from uh, going out without proper hijab and a male companion, banned from getting education, banned from working outside home, child marriages, lashing and stoning of women in public places, and thousands other human rights violations have been carried out against women 
during the Taliban regime, and even in uh, it's going on right now in areas under the Taliban rule. So Taliban's uh, radical approach towards governance and social justice is still being questioned by Afghans living within Afghanistan and abroad. Uh, the peace process with the Taliban has reached to a stage where discussion of ceasefire, prisoner exchange, and intra-Afghan dialogue are around the corner. Uh, there are arguments that Taliban have changed a lot in their leadership, intention, and mentality. Uh, will the success of peace process uh, uh, undermine the uh, the status of women in, in Afghanistan? So that is that is the uh, the, the big question now. Uh, going on, moving on to our first speaker, uh, she is Ms. Jamila Afghani. Uh, she'll be the first speaker of uh, today's panel discussion. She is the executive director at. Medica Afghanistan. She's an activist for women's rights and education. Uh, Ms. Jamila Afghani today will be talking about Afghan government's stance on role of women in peace process. Uh, I'm, I'm being told that Jamila Afghani is not currently online. Uh, do we have the second speaker online? Okay. Uh, so our uh, second speaker today uh, is Ms. Zarqa Yaftali. She is the Director of Women and Child Legal Research Foundation. Uh, Ms. Uh, Yaftali uh, will be speaking about peace process, human rights, and gender equality. Uh, we may come get back to Ms. Jamila's speech after uh, Ms. Zarqa Yaftali's presentation. Uh, may I please hand over the mic to Ms. Yaftali? Hello, do you hear me? Hello, yes, do you hear me? We can hear you. Thank yes. you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ali, for um, your, your nice introduction. Respected member of panel, ladies and gen gentlemen, greetings and best wishes for the end of current COVID-19 crisis. My deepest condolence for those who have lost their dearest and wish fast recovery for those who are infected. First of, all, first of all, a special thanks to Qatar University and UNSDNS for launching this webinar organized on women's situation and current peace process in Afghanistan. I'm supposed to talk on the following subjects briefly. Importance and ruling of peace management to, con to end conflict in Afghanistan, consideration of importance of human rights during peace process, emphasize on, on equal persons of women and men and all political and social movement in Afghanistan, importance of women participation in the peace process. This has been for four decades that Afghanistan people are suffering from conflict during uh, conflict. During this period of time, women were not safe. They are affected directly and indirectly. Within this period of time, many attempts have been made on for peace, which has not resulted to a stable and inclusive peace in Afghanistan. In my point of view, failure of peace process in Afghanistan is rooted to internal and external causes, which needs attention to pay on. External causes are concentration of regional countries and their conflict and interest of Afghanistan and as well as proxy war of hostile country using Afghanistan as their playground. Equipment and, um, and ammunition of terrorists, meanwhile, the conflict has paved the way for huge production of narcotics, which itself feeds the terrorists and, and insurgent groups in Afghanistan. What Afghanistan people anticipate from international community leading by United States uh, State of America and Afghanistan, and especially Afghanistan women, is not to, to conclude the peace at the end of the fight between United States government and Taliban, Taliban insurgents, and consider um, stability, security, and justice, an accountable and inclusive government as the objective of peace in Afghanistan, and not to allow the human rights values, women rights are complete. This is uh, obvious that all the people of even the nature itself want peace and wants the end of conflict. According to security report, which is very much depressed, 
with the figures of loss of losing 30 army men as an average on a daily basis. Every of these soldiers of having their family and child with the death of every one of them, many families of left without any patrons. Widows and child are losing their caregivers, their death as human being is having Drastic social consequence as a and as in society like Afghanistan. The man is the only person who has and come and feed their family. With their death, only widows and orphans who does not know how to gain remains at it is itself an Arabic crisis. Besides this, what is done for so far for name of peace process in Afghanistan not only has not resulted to any significant result, but also modified the Taliban to separate um, the message of victory to their followers, and uh, uh, and this has causes amp uh, amplification on their attacks. Importance of considering woman, uh, human rights in the peace process. Afghanistan is one of the country whose citizens suffered from violation of, of human rights values over the decades. The theory needs justice and observation of women rights values. Without any doubt, no attempt would be stable without ensuring justice and security. During the conflict years, different groups, especially Taliban, has committed violation of women rights widely, and there are war uh, crimes, and it is quite logic, logical that citizens should be concerned of violation of their rights and justice. As a state, Taliban do not respect the human rights value achievement, which has been achieved in the past um, uh, 20 years and did not uh, officially provide any comments in this regard. Meanwhile, their views of um, to the freedom of of women, women employment and education are very restrictive. Therefore, it is highly needed to have not negotiation points and read, read line during the peace negotiation and whatever agreement are made. Equal participation of men and women in all aspects. Afghanistan women, like other women all around them, the world has fought for their rights at the different social aspects, political, economical, and cultural for their purpose. They have given thousands of sacrifices. Although woman phobia is an issue which is resulted by war, conflict, um, and reason and, um, and persons of um, ethnic, traditional, fundamental customs. However, we are all the witness of women persons along the history of this country whether it is before Islam and after Islam, which means that the pre um, preventing case causes of women participation is developed and improved along the history based on traditional against, against which is the woman counted and defended and finally has a success. After establishment of the new government with the support of international community and post-Taliban, we are witness of women persons in all aspects, which um, presented the best example of management. Hence, it is vitally important for development, political management, economic and social issue of the country for formally consider, consider women participation during the peace process and as well for the post-peace in the government, in the government st uh, structures. Importance of women participation in the peace process. What is done so far about women participation in the peace process is mostly symbolic, rather having authorized role. However, even the presence is due to consist advocacy efforts, or uh, this has been respected, observed as the political men of the country, and peace, um, peace process from the international community did not value the woman's role in, the, in this process. When it is discussed about Taliban, automatically this concern has been raised that um, what they decide about work and activities of women, a group that women did not have any, any role during the ruling and even were not allowed to get out of their homes without uh, having a legal mahram, even for visiting doctors for their sickness. They have been taken all the working rights, education and women participation in all aspects. Past agreement with them, with this group, without having any guarantee, as not without uh, of risk and racist concern of women, and based on this, women persons during negotiation with Taliban is a vitally important. Women should have persons and defend from their rights, and not to allow their rights and the freedoms are compromised. 
Now we are limited time and the issues that are needed to be discussed in relation to women and peace processes a lot. It requires fair opportunity to discuss the details, but um, the points that I have noted down as a woman activist who has been active for 15 years as raised and discussed about um, these needs attention. Also, I believe that any peace process without consideration the internal and ex external causes and conflict in Afghanistan without be stable and long lasting. Resolving and of internal causes, resolving of power conflict, ensuring persons of accountable and inclusive system covering all um, ethnics, securing justice and paving the way for further development, resolving of external causes and creation of understanding between regional players on the peace process of Afghanistan and the uh, unending proxy war in the country. Thank you for your attention and hearing. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Yaftali. Uh, now we will move on to our first speaker, who was Ms. Jamila uh, Afani, if uh, she is, uh, if, if, if she will be available and her mic will be working, we'll listen to her speech, or otherwise we'll move on to Ms. Fiona Gull. Uh, Ms. Jamila Afghani is uh, the Executive Director of Medica Afghanistan. She is an activist for women rights and education. Uh, she'll be speaking on the topic, Afghan government's stance on role of women in the peace process. Uh, Ms. Afghani, can we have the floor to you now? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jamila Afghani. I'm leading Medica Afghanistan, which is a women support organization. We provide psychosocial and legal advices uh, for the victims of GBV and SGBV with almost turnover of 13,000 direct victims on annual basis. At the same time, I'm voluntarily leading Women International League for Peace and Freedom Afghanistan section since 2015. We are, uh, we are engaged in UN advocacy issues since 2017, but especially with UPR, CEDA, CRC, UN, CRPD, by development of advocacy briefings, presentation, and share the reports. Therefore, I have been actively engaged on the ongoing peace talks and I also participated in Doha Inter Afghan Dialogue in last June 2019. We aim to raise voices of the most uh, vulnerable Afghan women to different advocacy level, and we enhance to be engaged on localization of women, peace, and security agenda. I'm a women activist and human rights defender since past 23 years of my life. I will start my presentation by presenting a short overview, overview of current challenges of uh, women's rights in Afghanistan, and then uh, I will address the issue of peace talks and women participation. The Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, a period in which women were essentially invisible in public life, barred from going to school or working, Afghanistan is the longest war in American history. The U.S. led an international military campaign in Afghanistan immediately after 9-11. World leaders, including those of U.K. and U.S.A., often stated the need to improve Afghan women's rights as a justification for their intervention. The military campaign was presented in the part of fight for the rights and dignity of women after 18 years and more, almost two trillion later, the country is still in turmoil. The Taliban maintain their grip on almost 60% of the country. Women are badly affected by the conflict, despite gradual improvement of women's rights in Afghanistan remain a serious concern. Women uh, die in pregnancy and childbirth on average of six out of ten children die before their fifth birthday. 80% of women have no formal education and are illiterate. Female students are only 18% of students in third level. Women life expectancy is 51 years old. The lack of security for four decades of war and the risk of kidnapping and raping, rape has also prompted many families to force their young daughters into marriage. Women activists reported that up to 80% of marriages in poor rural areas are either forced or arranged. 
more than 50% of our fund girls are, are married or engaged by the age of 12. Some girls are betrayed into marriage to repay the debt and resolve a dispute. Despite the Afghan government and the international donors' efforts since 2001 they educated, uh, edu uh, to educate girls, an estimated two-thirds of Afghan girls are still do not attend school. Psychologists attributed this anomaly, anomaly to an, an endless cycle of domestic violence and poverty, targeting of a school and educational personal night rates on household abduction and recruitment of boys for armed violence, violence against journalists and media workers and health care facilities, torture of conflict-related detainees, abduction and assassination of religious leaders and sexual and gender-based violence against women and girls continue to exemplify the human rights situation in Afghanistan. Now I'm coming uh, on the issue of peace talks. Yet, despite the fact that women are affected by the conflict, and although women and youth make up the majority of our population, they are minor players in political life and the economy. Women remain excluded from public life and sidelined in the current peace talks. After the four decades of war, Afghanistan is today at critical juncture of two important re results at the ahead of us. The result of peace process and the result of political conflict after the presidential election result announcements. The election initially planned with the polls accounting for 4.2 uh, 4 billion out of 8.8 .8 million registered to vote. Many Afghan appeared to have a state at home instead of going to polling station due to fear of violence by the Taliban and lack of trust on the transparency of election commission. Voting was also made by technical obstacle and corruption all over the country. We are also concerned about the possibility of a failed election and waste of resources. The result of election between the two major political leaders has widened the gap among political parties, and today we have two presidents. The United States and other states have quickly facilitated the effort towards a negotiated peace settlement since September 2018. There has been a clear absence of meaningful participation by women and other actors, such as direct victims of war and peace process, alarming many who know that an inclusive delegation for peace is important to ensuring the success of the process and sustainability of any settlement. Afghan women must be able to meaningfully participate in decisions that directly affect including the design, implementation, and monitoring of such a decision. Although you, the United States is obliged to ensure women's active participation, but the Domestic Women, Peace, and Security Act of 2015 and Women, Peace, and Security Strategy of 2019, its approach to U.S. Taliban peace talk has instead led to the marginalization of Afghan women. <clears throat> When women have participated as a member of High Peace Council in discussion for a peace agreement, but this is a viable pathway to meaningful contribute since the HPC serve as a consultative body to raise awareness rather than to directly contribute to peace process. The new ministry established under the title of Ministry of Peace is working to bring a united voices, but with all diversity, it's a challenging task. From the other side, if civil society is coming under direct control of government, their freedom would go under question. The final list of negotiation, negotiators introduced by government out of 25, five are women. But all these representatives are from political parties. There is no representative from civil society. If we do not have member of civil society, how we can ensure the transparency of the negotiation? The agreement between Taliban and USA is signed, and a discussion is in the Afghan peace process moves away from issue of hard security and the use of violence. It is now more crucial than ever to think about the quality of peace and the strategies to sustain peace. This is why a more inclusive peace process and effective gender-related provision in any future peace agreement are important. In this context, pushing from 
for the inclusion of women and gender issue in formal peace process, which is lagging and has been criticized, would be a strategy to harness not only the Taliban acceptance of women legis legitimate concerns, but also its willingness to sustain to sustain the momentum of further intra-Afghan negotiation. The absence of Afghan women in the peace talk means more than a failure of political correctness. The absence of women and their voices in the process cast doubt on the type of peace that these talks would bring into the country. The exclusion of women is also a good indication of a broader lack of inclusivity in the peace process. In a country where around 2 million of people live with disability and where this number is increasing every day, girls and women with disability are some of the forgotten victims whose voices are not heard and whose rule is disregarded. They can I'm help sorry, with this during the You have one talk. minute. Yes. So I'm concluding uh, with the call on the, uh, our international allies that uh, with all uh, this we are calling on an international community, they must with, stand with us at this crucial moment to ensure that our rights will not be compromised for a political deal and after the settlement it is reached in a future intra-Afghan dialogue with more inclusive uh, participation of women. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Afghani, for the perfect timing. And thank you very much for your uh, insights. Our third speaker for today's panel discussion is uh, Ms. Fiona Gal. She is the director of Akbar, one of the most searched job-seeking website in the country. She, is more than 20, she has more than 20 years of experience in humanitarian development programs in Asia, spe specifically Afghanistan, um, uh, uh, India and Pakistan, and more recently in Africa in emergency relief and rehabilitation, health, disability, and gender in challenging environment. She'll be speaking about role of uh, civil society organizations in the peace process in Afghanistan with a special focus on women. Uh, over to you, Ms. Fiona. Yep, thank you very much. Good morning to everyone, um, to all those listening and to my fellow panelists um, and colleagues in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you so much. Am I loud and clear? Yes, Fiona, thank you. Yes, loud and clear. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, yes, I've been asked to speak about um, the role of CSOs in the peace process. I think we've just heard um, very good examples of what women have been uh, doing as women activists from uh, my fellow panelists, um, Ms. Uh, Zarka and Ms. Jamila. So I think I wanted to just give a bit of a background um, on what actually are the achievements of civil society, um, if you go to my next slide. So I think we have seen in the last 20 years since this government took over, um, we have seen a huge expansion of civil society. We have many uh, national civil society organizations registered under the Ministry of Justice. Um, and we also have many national NGOs and international NGOs registered under the Ministry of Economy in Afghanistan. So we have um, seen with donor support, of course, uh, with international support, we've seen a huge development and this is all types of associations and NGOs so we have you know professional associations we have teachers uh, associations farmers associations um, trades unions on the association side and we have many different NGOs uh, large and small who contribute to um, to projects and the development of the country so Akbar itself, the, the organization I represent, has 152 uh, NGO members. We, uh, we cover um, various sectors in health and education, agriculture, nutrition, wash, livelihoods, gender, disability, and peace building. So we cover both the humanitarian and the development side. And I think what we see as NGOs is, is we should complement uh, the work of the government and we should fill the gaps. So I, I think that 
in the time that I've been working in Afghanistan for 30 years, we have seen a, a, an increasingly strong role of women in both society and government. Uh, we do have, as also my colleagues pre presented, some statistics. I mean, we see more women now in the civil service, 24%, uh, more women parliamentarians in many countries, 28%. Uh, a very strong and a very strong role in teaching, in education and, and health. So I think we we do see the role of women um, has developed in the last 20 years since, since the Taliban regime. Next slide, please. However, um, we do know that we face many challenges. Um, for instance, if we look at the indicators, the Afghanistan um, SDGs that we have developed <clears throat> with the Ministry of Economy in the last of uh, four years, we have the first period from 2016 to 2020, where you can see that we have not very promising indicators in 2016 baselines um, and not very marginal increases. So we're, we're not looking at huge change. Um, and of course, we have a long way to go before 2030, when we are supposed to reach many of these. But I think what the SDG indicators help us to do is to focus on what is important. And for women, what is important, it is to have more gender equality and to have more access to roles in government and society. Um, it is important, as was mentioned also by my colleagues, to reduce discrim discrimination and violence against women. Um, and this is also one of the targets um, to reduce um, of abuse within within our family, with, with partners and, and outside. Also, one of the big problems we face on nutrition, we have a large percentage of the population which is under the poverty line. And for children especially, malnutrition is a very severe um, issue um, because the last two years we've had a drought and now this year we have COVID-19. So I think that's also a great challenge because women um, have many children in Afghanistan and many die in childbirth. So that is, again, a big issue, uh, how to improve health services so that women can have healthier and safer lives. And then, as also was mentioned, education. I mean, we've seen a huge increase in education generally in the country um, since 2001. But still, there's a huge amount of uh, illiteracy amongst uh, um, adults and, and especially amongst adult women. So that is also one of the big targets we have to aim for. So I think moving on to the next slide, I think for us as CSOs, um, civil society organizations, we have a role to help development, to support development, to support human rights, to support uh, an awareness in society that women and men uh, and girls and boys have a right to a safe life, a life free from violence, a life where they can develop their potential. But of course, the conflict has, has a very um, negative influence on this whole situation. Um, you know, many of us who work in peace building in local communities um, are frustrated by the fact that the violence has continued and it's in, in fact spread uh, during the last five years. So it, it's very hard to achieve some of the objectives um, that many of us are working on when violence um, carries on. So I think coming to the discussion about the peace process, uh, women, you know, need to be at the table, as my two colleagues very clearly spelled out. We need to um, be able to put our point forward. And I think this government has listened. Um, and to a certain extent, we have had representatives going to meet the Taliban in Doha. So I, I think what we would say is the Taliban are aware of the concerns that are being raised by women. And they need to actually take them into account. I think the modern generation in Afghanistan really knows that they have rights and they, they, have, their, they have to have more uh, satisfaction from the government, whichever government is in power. So I think that women have led this. And I think that's the strong point that uh, I, would, I, I see at the moment in Afghanistan, that we have a strong uh, women leaders, and we have strong civil society women leaders who can raise their voice. And I think on behalf of the population, they have been doing this. I think if you talk to women in, in Taliban controlled areas, however, 
they're still more concerned about immediate things and that that is safety and security and i think this is where the leaders have to listen to this we want peace in afghanistan um and i think that is the general message we want to push today thank you so much Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Fiona Gull, for your time and for your uh, wonderful insights. Uh, now we would uh, love to move on to our uh, last speaker of the day. Uh, he is uh, Ms. Dr. Muhammad Musa Jafari. He's the current Vice Chancellor of Khatib University for Academic Affairs. He's also Chief Editor at Khatib Pottery Journal and Editorial Board Member at Nigahe Muasar and Pejuhan Scientific Quarterly Journal. Uh, Dr. Jafari will be speaking on international institutions and Afghan peace process. Uh, can I hand over the mic to Dr. Jafari, please? Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you very much, and welcome everybody to this live stream. I am Mohammad Musa Jafari, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at Khatib University. I hold a PhD in international relations and Afghanistan security and foreign policy are my research areas. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your having me today. I hope every Afghan can witness perpetual peace and live a happy life. Today, I will be speaking about international institutions and Afghanistan peace process and why it is important to us. First of all, I'm going to focus on international institution definition from two perspectives. Then we will discuss as to why and how international institutions should be involved in Afghanistan peace process. As you know, after US Taliban agreement, the next important step is to start peace negotiations between Afghan government and the Taliban. Afghan government and the Taliban are gradually accomplishing a series of preconditions of peace negotiations, like releasing Taliban prisoners, and Afghans are worried about the future of peace process. It is because the Afghan public have paid a high price during this war. Many of them lost their lives, and most of Afghans still live under the poverty line. There are several important factors for reaching to mutually acceptable deal with the Islamist fundamentalist group, comprehensive peace process agenda, inclusiveness and international community support are necessary to have a strong voice against Taliban in peace negotiations. For many reasons, we need linkage between Afghan government peace and reintegration program and international institutions. Legwed and Dolbeko defined the international institution as behavioral regularities associated with a set of rules, norms, and routines, which can either have a formal or informal character. International institutions appear in several different forms, such as international organization, as well as international treaties, with divergent conceptual design missions and tasks. According to this definition, international organizations are same as international institutions. There are at least three forms of international organizations, political organizations like UN, economical organizations like WTO, and military organizations like NATO. These international organizations, after having witnessed two world wars, have played key roles in international security and world order. For example, the United Nations is international organizations with the intention to guarantee and maintain international peace and security. Fortunately, UN and its agencies and other important international organizations have had close partnership with Afghanistan in terms of state building and development programs after September 2001. But it is clear that their responsibilities and commitments should continue during the peace process as well. Another defini definition of international institution is a set of explicit or implicit principles, norm, norms, rules, and decision-making procedures 
at all which actor expectations converge in a given area of international relations. Here, international institutions are synonym of international regimes. Regarding to this definition, international institutions have normative aspects and they are created by a state or organizational uh, actor to share the plural values which are acceptable for all international actors. For example, human rights institutions, uh, which are internationally respected institutions, are respected by every state. However, some of these states might not actually believe in human rights. Now, I would like to move on the next part of my speech, which looks at why and how the international institutions should be involved in the Afghanistan peace process. In fact, four decades of violent conflict inside Afghanistan has been one of the biggest challenges for facing international peace and security. Hence, the success of peace process in Afghanistan will be a great achievement for international order. In my view, the Afghan government, for two reasons, cannot lead and preserve the Afghan strategic interests and desires alone in the peace process. Referring to international institutions in peace process helps to make a strong agenda and support for reaching a deal with the Taliban. More importantly, the weakness of Afghanistan government would be dangerous in the peace negotiations. One country and two presidents explains the extreme political crisis. One other, on the other hand, widespread corruption, poverty, unemployment, and insecurity have undermined the, legi le the legitimacy of government. Then what are our distinguished achievements in the government for negotiations with Taliban? How a failed state could persuade Taliban to accept our current democratic political system? We absolutely need the support of international institutions to guarantee our pluralistic democratic values in peace negotiations. International organizations like UN and its agencies should monitor closely the Afghanistan peace process and use international regimes and norms to restrict Taliban on negotiations. In the pluralistic perspective, all of democratic values are international values and institutions. It is necessary to protect and guarantee these values during Afghanistan peace process. International institutions can cover and support the discourse of Afghan government in peace negotiations. Another important role of international institutions in Afghanistan peace process relates to this question, what do the Taliban want? The answer of this question is pretty simple. For years, their goals have been announced to drive out the international coalition and reestablish the Islamist Emirate of Afghanistan with a Sharia-dominated society. According, according to these goals, it is absolutely hard to bridge the gap between democratic values and Taliban agenda. Without supporting and monitoring of peace process by international institutions, the Taliban certainly want to ignore many of the democratic values. In addition, I'm really worried about knowledge, understanding, and sensitivity of our negotiators about the importance of democratic norms and values in peace negotiations. In fact, without the support of international institutions, it is likely that the democratic values might be ignored and sacrificed. Finally, after talking about necessity of international institutions' presence in Afghanistan peace process, I think it is important to answer this question. How should international institutions be involved in Afghanistan peace process? As we know, the peace process is a long-term procedure. And there are many actors who are involved in the Afghan peace process. Therefore, along with the formal procedure and direct negotiations between two sides, I think international institutions should work in the back and the rule of UN in peace negotiations will be so important for us. Afghanistan peace relates to regional and international powers, and it means we need international cooperation. So to summarize, peace process must be supported in the context yeah, of... Yes, uh, yes, I finish. Um, to summarize, peace process must be supported in context of ensuring the political, social, economic, 
and cultural rights for all Afghans. Thank you for your attention, and that is all from my side. If you have any question, feel free to ask them so we can discuss them during the Q&A at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jafari, uh, for your lovely insights. Uh, now we will move on towards the Q&A session. Uh, we have multiple questions coming in, uh, coming in from multiple uh, attendees, participants uh, that come from different backgrounds. Uh, so there are there are concerns locally and there are concerns internationally. Uh, but before we move on, uh, I'd like to share the result of the poll uh, that that had been launched in the in the beginning of this webinar. Um, the uh, webinar attendees who responded to the poll, 79% said that yes, the aftermath of the peace process with the Taliban will undermine the status of women in Afghanistan, and 21% said no, it will not. Uh, we also launched this poll two days ago on our Facebook uh, page, and uh, the reaction, uh, these were mostly reactions from the local participants, the Afghan citizens living within Afghanistan. 100% of the uh, reactions were that yes, the aftermath of the peace process will undermine uh, the status of women in Afghanistan. Uh, so that is the major concern locally and also the poll shows that the, the same can be seen internationally. Uh, moving on towards the questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we do not have a lot of time to go through all the questions, so I request the panelists to keep their responses to a minimum of 30 seconds to one minute in order for us to be able to cover as many questions as possible. So the first question is, uh, uh, this, this has been asked that what is, uh, what do you think are the major elements preventing participation of women in the peace process? What solutions can be offered to reduce these obstacles in order to maximize the women participation uh, in the peace process? Any of the panelists can can go ahead and answer this question. Please unmute your mic before you want to respond respond to this question. I think you should ask Jamila. Over. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, this is very uh, good question that uh, how we can um, uh, meet the challenge and what can be the solution. Uh, first of all, I think um, uh, the, the, the Taliban and Afghan government, both sides are under, uh, under uh, direct supervision of international community. And uh, they are uh, helping both sides in, in, in the solution for the political deal. They have to ensure uh, that women uh, should, be, uh, should be considered as an important element for the peace uh, talks, uh, intra-Afghan peace talks, and women issues should be on the agenda. It shouldn't be sidelined um, as a, as a uh, compromise to political deal. And um, I can see uh, as a women activist that we on the ground, we are raising our voice by, by multiple of activities, um, advocacy on national and, and regional international level. But uh, the solution is only I can see with all these political diversity that international community can enforce Afghan government and uh, Taliban to, to, to take women's agenda and their consideration as a as a as an important priority topic of the the political settlement. Thank you, Ms. Jamila. Uh, our next question is: uh, uh, What will be the position of women in a society after the peace agreement under different scenarios? Uh, what do you think would be the in the uh, the status of women in the best case scenario, and what would would it be in the worst case scenario? And this is also related to another question uh, by, asked by another participant who's, who asks, what are the plans uh, you, you are aware of in place to defend the rights of women during the peace negotiations with the Taliban and after peace negotiations with the Taliban? So uh, probably uh, if something goes wrong, what, what is the, the plan? 
again I should answer? Um, yeah, if, if you want to answer this question. Yeah, actually, uh, as I said, I was also one of the uh, attendee of Doha uh, intra Afghan dialogue, first of all, uh, intra Afghan dialogue. Uh, I think in that um, gathering, uh, there were 11 women, very strong women uh, delegates, where Taliban uh, met uh, the strong women, and even uh, a few of them, they were calling that uh, we knew that uh, a group of dangerous women are coming to this gathering. And uh, Taliban has come to this conclusion that Afghan women are not the Afghan women of 20 or 30 years back. We will not be silenced uh, with any, uh, any, any, any type of setback. We will not go back uh, and we will move forward. We know it will be doubled our challenges. It will be doubled our work and our effort. But of course, for a better life for our future children, for future generation, we will continue our struggle. And I'm sure that the international community will not leave us alone. They will accompany us with this, uh, this voices. And we will not let them to leave us alone. We will lay, raise our voices again and again. And we, we will uh, form many, many forms of advocacy on international level that this was their promise, and this is their promise, and it should be their promise to stand beside Afghan women. Thank you, Ms. Jamila. Uh, Ms. Fiona Gal, do you have a response for that? Yeah, um, I agree every, with everything Jamila says, but and I think also we should remember, I mean, status of women in any country under any government should have, you know, they have, they should have uh, rights and they should have um, a voice. So whichever government comes along, you know, this is 50% of the community of the population. So women need, you know, everything. They need education, they need health, they need um, better uh, livelihoods. So, you know, I think whatever government comes along, this government, this country, Afghanistan has signed all these conventions. So it has to live up to the promises it's made on the international uh, level as well. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Fiona. Uh, we'll move on to our last question, last two questions. Uh, probably one is asked from the organizers and one is from an international audience. Uh, why was the government represented, uh, representative not invited to the webinar? Uh, I don't know if we need to respond, uh, respond to this question or not. Uh, the next question is, what about reproductive health to empower women further? This has obviously been asked by an international audience uh, who believes there are other preferences that needs to be focused on in Afghanistan? Uh, Ms. Uh, Yaftari, can you, do you have a response for uh, the question about the reproductive health of women? Hi everyone, this is Dorothea from the SDSN Secretariat. I believe we have a bit of an audio issue. Um, Ms. Yaftari, would you like to respond to the question? The question was if birth control is not permitted in Afghanistan and if if so why and what the government is doing to empower women's rights and reproductive health yeah um, um, reproductive health is uh, one of uh, one of uh, main agenda or one of main topic that uh, needs lots of legally in Afghanistan um, and abortion is also not allowed in Afghanistan uh, it has lots of uh, complication, legal complication. Um, um, it will uh, affect uh, life of women, psyche of women, the normal routine of women, because every mother has around four to eight children, and uh, they are looking after the children uh, and household, all these activities. Then there is no time for mother to look after her, herself and for her food even, and, uh, for health and, and for her uh, development. And I think when uh, there will be a government in a way or other way, Taliban is also uh, bringing lots of issue, women issue regarding the Sharia. And uh, from that perspective, they are giving like uh, a religious uh, understanding that childbirth, uh, uh, controlling childbirth will be a religious issue. 
uh, which needs lots of uh, issues. Currently, we are working, and in the future, it will be a further challenging issue. Thank you very much. Um, and unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions. I want to thank all the who has um, submitted questions for our speakers and remind everybody to, if you found that your question did not get answered throughout the Q&A session, to please uh, feel free to engage with our colleagues at um, SDS in Afghanistan over Twitter and, uh, and their Facebook site. Um, I want to give a big thanks also to um, the whole team of panelists we had from SDS in Afghanistan this uh, morning, afternoon, for these interesting insights.